You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. This is The Art Ambassador with your host, Gwenda Joyce. A former gallery owner, Gwenda takes artists through a step-by-step process that moves them past frustration and into comfort, abundance, and creative flow. So now, please welcome the host of The Art Ambassador, Gwenda Joyce. Welcome to the Art Ambassador Radio Show. I'm your host, Gwenda Joyce. We are on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Today is the first radio show of the new year. I want to continue the holiday spirit of peace and goodwill with a discussion of an important non-sectarian exhibition, Collaboration and Connection, is the name of the exhibition, and it is on view at the Islamic Community Center of Northern California in Oakland, California. I saw this exhibit last month, and it really set me up for an enjoyable holiday season. My guests today are organizer and artist Leah Delson and participating artist Julie Cohn. Julie's painting in the exhibit was done in collaboration with another artist, Iris Schenker, and she is also a an artist whose career I have followed since she took my course for artists, the Yes program, several years ago. Um, so many ways for things to come together, so many connections. Uh, but like many Americans, I have been jostled by the political changes that occurred in 2016 and this last year as a result of the presidential election. It has caused a shift in the world and affected me on a personal basis. It's really been a disruption and brought out high levels of anxiety, a confrontation in values, and changes to what many of us had considered to be accepted norms and standards. Everything's been turned around. To counteract this in my own way and to maintain a sense of stability, early last year, I decided to become even stronger and more forthright in my commitment to bring the values of art and creativity into the public domain. I have made a strong push to be more visible in the world and bring out my message of encouraging creativity and artistic expression. I've reached out to more artists with my program, called the Yes Program, and with other coaching that leads artists to be more successful with more public exhibitions, sales, and gallery representation, if that's what they so choose. I've written a book, Nine Steps to Artistic Freedom, available at bit.ly.com slash order nine steps, that's B-I-T, uh, L-Y dot com slash order nine steps. And, of course, I'm hosting the Art Ambassador radio show. Thank you for listening. I believe that art and creativity are powerful forces that counteract the negativity and destructiveness that's out there. I know many of you agree with me, and that's why you're here. You're drawn to programs that... Uh, talk about art that bring out that sense of connection and creativity and artistic personal expressiveness. I think that when we all do this, we make the world a better place to live in. And what's wrong with that? As the holidays approached, I was pleased to receive an invitation to an exhibition by one of my artists, as I mentioned, artist Julie Cohn. It's titled Collaboration and Connection, and it was to be held at the Islamic Cultural Center of Northern California, a place I didn't even know existed, let alone a place that put art on view. The more I learned about the show, the more fascinating it became. 
I went to the opening, as did many other people. And it was just a wonderful, festive experience of coming together, of sharing and being communal and embracing many different faiths and many different cultures. Collaboration and Connection is a biennial art exhibition that invites artists to come together to showcase compelling artwork and further interfaith understanding and respect between the artists and the public. The goal of the show is to connect all faiths and cultures through the arts. With that introduction, I'd like to bring on my first guest today, Leah Delson, who was very much involved in the organization of the exhibition. Leah, welcome to the Art Ambassador Radio Show. Thanks so much, Gwenda. You did such a beautiful job of explaining uh, the purpose of the exhibition and um, uh, the background, so I really appreciate that. Well, uh, my pleasure, and thank you for being here. Uh, it's a fascinating exhibition. Uh, it's been held three times in the past as a biennial, and I'm curious to know, Leah, how was it different this year? The main difference this year is that we required um, every artist who participated to actually uh, create a proposal with other artists, at least two artists had to work together to come up with a proposal for their artwork, and they had to uh, create it together in some way. And in the past, we've had artwork uh, primarily from individual artists. All our exhibits have been um, on the theme of interfaith peace, understanding, uh, coexistence, and dialogue, and all of them have been sponsored by a local uh, Jewish, Christian, and Muslim uh, community and have incorporated uh, artists from those communities as well as from the larger uh, community of the East Bay and the Bay Area, and actually even nationally, and, and a few international artists. Um, but the difference so those, this time for our... Uh, well, th those three organizations, I understand, are called the Faith Trio, the Islamic and the Jewish and the uh, Presbyterian Church that have combined together, they call themselves the Faith Trio, and that they are responsible in, in many cases for bringing the artist to awareness of the exhibition. Uh, can you yes. tell us how? Yeah, tell us how the artists were actually selected and this journey that they took in terms of coming together. I, I think it started with a, a program way back in August. Is that right? Well, that was part of it. This was the fourth in a series of, as you said, biannual exhibitions that we've had. And what was special and new about this one, as opposed to the three previous ones, um, is that each we required that each piece of art be a collaboration in, uh, of at least two artists. And we had a program uh, back in August um, where we invited artists to come and uh, meet other artists they might want to collaborate with. And we had a lovely program uh, we did some collaborative art exercises as part of that program, and artists uh, were able to make connections. Many of the collaborations were between artists of different faiths, but we did not require that um, as a condition of participating in the exhibition, but we did encourage it. So um, we had artists from the Muslim, Jewish, and Christian communities come, and we also accepted anybody to, be, to participate in this exhibit. We did not charge any fees for participation. Um, we um, we required uh, proposals to be submitted at the, uh, actually it was August 20th, and we had a jury process. Our art jury um, included representatives from each of the faith trio congregations as well as um, uh, some other artists in the community um, uh, representing Muslims, Jews, and Christians, as I said. Um, and then um, the proposals that were accepted, uh, the artists had a few months to work on on their artwork and then uh, before they um, delivered it. And we, as we've been, this is the uh, fourth such exhibition that we've uh, put on uh, that's been an interfaith art exhibition. We had a large number of artists who'd previously participated uh, to draw upon and we, uh, in order to publicize what we were doing, we also drew upon the congregants of the three, those three congregations. 
Um, yes, uh, well, I understand there were a lot of artists who were interested, and artists are interested, they're motivated by a desire to show their own work, and y- you wanted to include a level of polish community and effort to, to bring people together to build bridges in this show, and it really did uh, its job. We're going to take a break right now, and I know, Leah, you have a piece in the show, so when we come back, we'd love to hear more about that. This is the Art Ambassador Radio Show, and I am your host, Gwenda Joyce, on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Dr. Rob Moyer is the director of the Ocean River Institute, and he is passionate about saving the ocean by helping dolphins suffering from nitrogen pollution. Nitrogen is a dangerous pollutant, affecting our oceans, altering ocean ecosystems, and contributing to global warming. The Ocean River Institute provides opportunities to make a difference and encourages people to go the distance for savvy stewardship of a greater and bluer planet Earth. Partnered with organizations from Massachusetts to Florida, Alaska to the Caribbean, the Ocean River Institute's mission is to foster involvement in conservation and environmental monitoring by facilitating grassroots efforts at local and regional levels. Hello, I'm Rob Moyer of the Ocean River Institute. Please visit our website at oceanriver.org. Sign up for free e-alerts. You may call us at 617-661-6647. Our email address is info at Ocean River. Become informed and then act with us. Thank you. Joseph A. Moylan is the owner of Ion Health, which specializes in very unique medical devices. Ion Health offers biomats, alkalife, and frequency machines. Biomats are a far infrared and negative ion emitting FDA approved medical device. With many different sizes available, you can place them on your bed, on a massage table, or on a seat in your car. It is an unobtrusive way to health. Alkalife machines are water ionizers that cleanse and raise the alkalinity of your tap water, making high alkaline water. Frequency machines utilize certain frequencies to kill viruses and bacteria. These devices are safe and effective. Coming from a health-conscious background and studying physiology at the Academy of Natural Health, Joseph A. Moylan has 15 years of experience in the health field and wants to help you live a healthy, long life. Visit www.ionhealthbiomats.weebly.com or call 765-520-2988. Don't let your health go astray. Get in touch today. Welcome back to the Art Ambassador Radio Show on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Gwenda Joyce, and I'm here today with Leah Leah Delson, who is one of the artist participants in a fabulous show that's still on view at the Islamic Art uh, Center in Oakland, California. And it is uh, Leah with whom I'm speaking. And Leah, as one of the artists in the show, tell me about what you exhibited. Your your background is in photography. How did your piece come about to be included in this well, show? You know, what is it about for you? Thanks so much, Gwenda. Um, you know, I've photographed many interface uh, programs that we've had as far, part of our faith trio. And I photographed some of our previous exhibits. And each of our um, exhibitions were wonderful opportunities for people to come together from different faiths. And we were really astounded, honestly, at how art was a wonderful bridge between communities. So my concept that I developed with another artist was to showcase some of the photos that I had taken at some of these previous occasions of people who were clearly of different faiths, women uh, wearing Muslim headdresses. We had uh, some Roman Catholic nuns who participated and were amazingly um, enthusiastic about uh, these efforts. We had, um, you know, other people from other faiths, and we wanted to put together a montage of photos from previous exhibitions. And the theme was a a poem that I find very striking, which was written um, by an a English soldier during World War I, which is an anti-war poem uh, describing the horrors of war and saying that, uh, you know, this, the, and saying that, and calling uh, a saying, dolce et decorum est, which uh, means it is fitting and beautiful, and uh, how, how sweet and fitting it is to die for one's country, calls it that old lie. And I wanted to take 
my feelings that war is not the solution, violence is not the solution, that peace and peacemaking can be very difficult. It's very difficult sometimes uh, to approach one's adversaries and try to have a dialogue with them. And yet, to me and my belief and of the other uh, person who worked with me on this piece, we felt that there is as much heroism and courage involved in making peace as there is in making war. And it is sweet and fitting to try to make peace with one's enemies. And so that was the theme of our art uh, piece. And I hope I got the message across. I quoted the original poem that was the inspiration, which was an anti-war poem. And I put, I think, our own twist on it that instead of, you know, becoming heroes by dying for our country, let's try to become heroes by making peace as so many people do. And it's not only us. There's so many peacemaking efforts, you know, around the world, you know, for generations. And we want to acknowledge those. And, and um, I also wanted That's to mention That's a very that powerful message. That's a very powerful message, Leah. I really love it, and I, I feel, yeah. You, you tell us about uh, the audience that you felt that the audience was as enthusiastic as the artist, and I, I really was fascinated when you brought that up in our conversation earlier. So, tell us about the audience. Absolutely, and one thing I want to mention: if people are interested in this interfaith art project they can go to a website that's been created uh, to document the previous efforts and hopefully current and future efforts it's called interfaithart.org there's also a contact um, option there so people can send comments um, or you know contact uh, us in, in if they're interested uh, there's also a Facebook page if you go to Facebook and look for interfaith art exhibit you'll um you'll be able to get in touch with uh, our interfaith art efforts um so as far as the enthusiasm of the audience it was so palpable i have to say i think what really struck me was not only those of us who are you know trying to say we need to be loving and make peace with people from other faiths it, you know, that seemed to have this message it resonated so strongly with the muslim community that so strongly supported what we're doing, both the Islamic Cultural Center of Northern California, which has been the host for this um, exhibition. And I just want to say that there is going to be a uh, closing reception for this exhibition. It's going to be on uh, Saturday, February 24th. Uh, it's going to be from 2 to 4 p.m. And the uh, organization is located at 1433 Madison Street in Oakland. Um, so everybody's welcome to come. It's free, and we'll hopefully have a wonderful program, and we'll be able to hear from artists talking about their artwork. Um, it's a beautiful as, building as well, and it's a building I yes. know I would not have gone to if I didn't know that it was a, a place that was hosting an art exhibition that was open to everyone. So I do encourage people to come and see the show and feel comfortable uh, stepping into maybe a little bit stepping out of your comfort so zone, but you'll find it very welcoming. So, so tell us a little more about uh, the audience and participation, uh, how it's been received. Well, I think you make an excellent point that for a lot of people going to a Muslim uh, uh, cultural center, the Islamic cultural center is maybe a little foreign or intimidating. Um, unfortunately, there's a lot of bias or stereotypes about Muslims sometimes. And so part of what we accomplished, I think, was we brought a lot of people to this um, institution who might have not otherwise come. And as you said, it's a really beautiful and historic building. It was originally built by the Freemasons in 1908. It's got gorgeous uh, woodwork and uh, painted glass. It's quite lovely. Um um, well, just, I know it's um, some good plans for the, the show. The closing reception is coming up, and then I think there's a plan for the future. So if you would give us those dates again, Leah. and uh, um, The closing reception will be on Saturday, February 24th. It'll be between 2 to 4 p.m. Uh, the location is 1433 Madison Street, that's in Oakland, California, at the Islamic Cultural Center. It's going to be in the art gallery on the upper level. The exhibit is also open 
Fridays and Saturdays uh, from 12 to 4 p.m. most weekends, but not this uh, coming weekend. But uh, following that, it will be open um, uh, starting on uh, uh, January 12th. And, uh, well, it's uh, a to, wonderful uh, the- exhibition. So, Leah, thank you so much for joining us here today and telling us about this show and encourage others to enjoy it and and open their hearts to all faiths and cultures uh, and bring some expression of peace into the world. So this is Gwenda Joyce. I'm your host of the Art Ambassador Radio Show on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We're going to take a break and we'll come back with more talk about this fascinating exhibition from over the holidays. Renaissance woman, trailblazer, maverick. Those are just some of the words to describe to Chandra Poulard, owner and CEO of House Virgo Entertainment, LLC, a woman minority veteran-owned entertainment company based in Washington, D.C. Ms. Poulard served 10 years honorably in the United States Navy and departed from active duty to pursue her dreams of becoming an entertainment mogul. House of Virgo Entertainment offers script writing, producing, directing, DJ services, editing, and more. They cater to businesses, corporations, college students, working professionals, aspiring artists and nonprofit organizations, and employ veterans of the armed forces. Tashandra Poulard is pioneering the way we view media and taking her brand global. Visit her at www.houseofvirgoentertainment.com or call 281-515-3740 and like her on Facebook at House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC. Certified professional coach Pamela Reeves can help you with your relationships. Motivational and image coaching are just some of the ways she can help you enhance all aspects of your life. Her book, Is It Love or Merely a Sick Attachment?, helps readers clearly distinguish healthy, loving relationships from toxic ones. Ms. Reeves has put her words into action through Ray of Hope Kenya, an international initiative that provides outreach to victims of abusive relationships there with the goal of helping them rebuild their lives and the tools to avoid abuse. Ms. Reeves operates various business interests through her umbrella network nella llc and credits her success to her diverse work experience whatever your goals whether striking a balance reinventing your image or simply lifting your lifestyle pamela reeves will help you achieve them your life your call dial 410-902-5715 or email pamela at pam reg one at verizon.net she's also on the web at pamreeves.com and on twitter at pamela underscore reeves Welcome back to the Art Ambassador Radio Show on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Gwenda Joyce, and we're here today talking about a wonderful exhibition that is on exhibit at the Islamic Cultural Center of Northern California. And the exhibit has is a biennial. It has the goal of connecting all faiths and cultures through the arts. Uh, the title, Collaboration and Connection, uh, is exactly what it is. It's been a, con- a group of artists who have collaborated and connected through their process of making art together. And with that, I'd like to introduce Julie Cohn, who is one of the artists in the exhibition and also an artist who I've worked with in the past and have known for some time. Uh, so, Julie, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Gwenda. Thanks for inviting me. Well, I'm just so pleased to talk about this collaboration and your uh, experience of working uh, to create a piece with Iris Schenker, your partner for this project. So tell us uh, about how you and Iris came together to uh, make the piece, the painting that you did. Well, I had met Iris a few months before Leah introduced the project to me. And I thought, you know, we would be a great match for doing this project together. Uh, She is into conceptual art. Uh, She does very playful work and very deep work uh, about mostly women. Uh, And I really, I I was very drawn to uh, her work when I saw it. And we started becoming friends. And I thought, well, why not? I'll ask her. And we'll see um, how we can bring together two different approaches with our different ways of doing art into one project and also understand more about each other's cultural background. Uh, You know, we were both raised Jewish, but differently. 
and, uh, and, and how we've both shifted in our lives uh, since our upbringing in terms of so, spirituality. So tell it. Yeah, tell us how your faiths and the three faiths represented in the exhibit came into play as you decided on your subject for the mixed media work that you ended up creating. Okay, well, first of all, when Iris and I were discussing the project, we realized we did want to include all three faiths in the project because it's very important to both of us that we bring people together uh, in a peaceful way. And so we decided we had the connection with each other of Judaism. And beyond that, we had this connection of nature. For Iris, nature has a capital N. And I love that because nature itself is a real binder or a bridge between people of all religious backgrounds. So uh, we decided to use a symbol that would represent all three of the Abrahamic uh, religions, Islam, Christianity, and Judaism. And that symbol is the palm frond. Now, the images so that, that you created, that symbol has been the used palm, in yeah. all three religions. I didn't know that. That's fascinating. And I know in the painting that you created, you've got these uh, fronds intersecting, interweaving, but you've also got a nice open space in between. So we can't exactly, mm. we can't see the piece, but describe a little bit, if you would, about what it actually looks like. Okay. Well, when Iris and I were discussing finding a symbol and the frond came up and we read about it and we realized that there are all these different ceremonies in every religion, each of these three religions, where the palm is used in all these different ways. Um, I started drawing a little sketch of the palm fronds. And I didn't even really know exactly what I was doing. I mean, you know how things come more intuitively sometimes? Sure, and I just started they do. drawing the fronds. Yeah, in all these different directions, and I made three of them, and I loved the design. So they were all interlocking and, and interfolding, and, and, and I took uh, quite a bit of time to do the drawing on a large watercolor canvas, uh, watercolor that I stretched around canvas. Uh, and, uh, and then, you know, what happened with Iris and myself is we started developing ideas in color, like how do we want to work with color and how do we want to work with style for each of these fronds? And what do we want to say with each of them? And I knew that intuitively it would all come together. So what ended up happening is the Christian one is blues and greens and very flowing watercolor. And it felt like Christianity went with water very beautifully. Uh, just, you know, I think of uh, in, in some Christian religions that water is a big part of the religion. Um, and then the Islamic frond uh, we felt that Iris should be responsible for the amazing Moroccan-like patterns on, on that, which she worked uh, with using a transfer method. It's a beautiful pattern of all kinds of wonderful colors that remind one of the tiles in Morocco. And then the last one, we really had to work with some ideas together, you know, really moving through the ancient Jewish religion, you know, that was at the heart of all of the Abrahamic religions. And this one, we wanted to have an ancient feeling and a really warm, a real warmth to it in color. And we ended up uh, putting some uh, calligraphy, Hebrew calligraphy on it, which has some significant meaning for us as well. Well, it really is a collaboration, and I think you're an ex example of how people come together together uh, to foster understanding and community. And when we come back, we're going to talk more about your work. Julie is more of a watercolor artist, a watercolor painter, and you can find her work at her website, julieconefineart.com. And Iris Schenker's work is different, and you can see it at irisschenker.com which is spelled I-R-Y-S-S-C-H-E-N-K-E-R. -E and you will get an example of the two artists uh, 
very different artists and how they collaborated and came together. It's such a wonderful example. We have a break coming up right now, but we're going to stay with Julie and find out more about the, her artistic expression. We are on the Art Ambassador radio show at BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio, and I'm your host, Gwenda Joyce. We'll be right back. For over 50 years, Evelyn Stapula has been a loving advocate for people with disabilities throughout the state of Pennsylvania. President and founder of Big Heart Bridges, her organization actively campaigns for legislation and support of civil liberties that meet the needs of disabled individuals with housing, transportation, and employment. Ms. Stapula has joined forces with a variety of esteemed organizations that advocate for the disabled. She serves on the board of the United Cerebral Palsy of Pittsburgh and the Governor's Cabinet and Advisory Committee for People with Disabilities and she is a consultant for the Pennsylvania Governor's Conference for Women. Her many efforts have led to the implementation of a transportation program for the disabled with the Access Paratransit System of Allegheny County. Evelyn Stapula strives daily to serve the interests of the disabled, to protect their freedoms, and enable them to live normal public lifestyles. To learn more, please call 412-491-2605 or email Evelyn at ers92645 at verizon.net. Do you battle with weight loss? There is a solution. Founder of Weight No More Consulting, Deborah Simons, can help you lose weight safely and effectively through weight loss surgery. I know. I had the surgery two years ago, and I am 135 pounds lighter and medication-free. This full-service weight loss center caters to your every need as you navigate to a healthy weight following surgery. Servicing all of Canada, Wait No More Consulting takes pride in its compassionate care and guides you through each step before and after surgery. Starting with informational meetings, Wait No More Consulting educates each potential client before they decide to have surgery on the health risks of obesity and the various weight loss surgeries available. After surgery, Wait No More Consulting provides a solid support system with ongoing meetings to ensure continued success. Deborah Simons and Wait No More Consulting are committed to promoting your health and wellness through maintaining a healthy weight for life. Welcome to the Art Ambassador Radio Show on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Gwenda Joyce, and I'm here today with artist Julie Cohn who was one of the collaborators in a piece that she and artist Iris Schenker did together for Collaboration and Connection on view now at the Islamic Community Center of Northern California. And Julie, I'm curious to know, it's just such a fascinating thing to do to collaborate with another artist. So you and Iris are very different artists, but what did you learn about working with one another that you can share with us? Well, first of all, uh, we really uh, enjoyed hearing how each other viewed the same project, and we got better and better at listening to each other and not getting so narrow about our ideas that we had to do it our own way. I think we we grew in that way, that we were more open and responsive as time went on. That's fabulous. Very different. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. That's such a great lesson. That's a great lesson. Exactly. Um, The fact that we use very different styles meant that we didn't do a lot of painting and uh, working with our different methods together. We would actually paint the painting separately, but we would come together and we would analyze and discuss and maybe redraw a part of it or, you know, but overall we would take it to our own studios and then go back and look at it and then do that again. There were some things that we did together. It was more like the finishing touches of cleaning up the whole piece, which was great. We just, really worked on that together till it looked crystal clean and prepared to show. Well, this work is actually very different from your main body of work, which is uh, more landscape oriented and uh, uses watercolor uh, in a beautiful way. Uh, how did this affect your your own work? How was it different from your own work? And, and did it make you more passionate about your own work? Well, that's interesting. You know, I really think that um, pattern and beautiful uh, ways of working with composition 
we were really working together on that, Iris and myself. You know, we were really enjoying that aspect. And I think that's really affected my other work. And I'm more often thinking about pattern in my work. Um, I would say that the process, the, the amount of time that it takes to really develop a painting, uh, that's also part of working in collaboration. And I am becoming more and more patient in my own work as I develop uh, not only work on my own, uh, which is in the landscape area and with abstracted patterns and such, but also doing commissions with others. And what's happening is some of my work is now more integrated with the dialogue uh, with people who have, let's say, lost loved ones and want to connect with them through portraiture. Um, and I'm doing portraits of their loved ones, including imaginative and spiritual feelings and imagery um, based on the discussions that I'm having with my clients. Uh, and, and then I'm also working with large commissions, uh, people who have these places they're passionate about in their lives, uh, and they want to uh, help me with imagination and images that they see in, in the way of photographs or they've taken themselves to make very large landscape commissions. Well, Julie, it sounds like you have really opened up your sense of art making to uh, many different things that you're interested in, uh, many things that you are aware of in the world around you that come to you. And I think that's fascinating. Mm -hmm. I am mm -hmm. uh, aware also that you were uh, a participant in my program for artists, the YES program, uh, several years ago. Yeah. And I, I would like if you would share a little bit about how that program changed your approach to your art and your career has just really been one thing after the other since that time. Um, I know because I'm on your, your email list and <laughs> you're just very busy. You're showing a lot. You're doing a number of things and I'm so happy for you. Um, tell us the, the result of that experience, if you would. Well, first of all, Gwenda, I think you are an incredibly gifted listener, and you can really connect into where a person is at a given time. And at the time, I was feeling, you know, when I met you during the program, I felt somewhat repressed in terms of getting out into the world with my work. And you really helped me a great deal with my confidence uh, because of your listening skills and your uh, fabulous skills with having owned a gallery. Uh, and also, I just felt better equipped to enter into a gallery, which now I have, and now I do have representation in a gallery, um, because you brought us to galleries in San Francisco. You took the time to bring your students uh, to galleries and walk through them and discuss with us how things are done from their point of view, not just from our side, but what does the gallery owner think and how does he or she work with his or her business? And so uh, I just think that uh, you have a great way with people in helping us to keep exploring our, our inner depths and really honor what we want in our lives. Uh, Julie, tell us what you've got coming up in terms of shows for, for the year. Sure. Um, I have, uh, well, first of all, we have the interfaith show that you discussed before. Um, I'm in a group show in Berkeley at the Berkeley Arts Center until January 19. And that's at 1275 Walnut Street in Berkeley. And then I'm also in a show called Innerscapes, uh, one painting of mine at the Marin uh, Museum of Contemporary Art called MOCA. And that is from January 13 through February 25 in Novato. Well, Julie, you've got a full program. And I know our audience doesn't even know that this is just one of the, the two directions uh, artistically that you devote your life to. So when we are going to take a break, 
Uh, and we will find out more about Julie Cohn's other passion in life. This is Gwenda jo- Joyce. I'm the host of the Art Ambassador Radio Show, coming to you on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Stay with us. Find out more. We'll be right back. The earliest human societies worshipped a female goddess. Little is known about this time because we did not always have a written recorded history. It was around 3100 B.C. when the Sumerians invented the first written language, and everything that preceded this time is prehistory. The prehistorical record includes all of women's unwritten history from 30,000 B.C. to the time that men began achieving political power around 3000 B.C. Male feminist artist Kimberly Berg maintains a strong position in educating and inspiring both men and women through his devotional art to the goddess in all women. Studying their history is paramount to understanding who women were and who they would become later living in a patriarchal society. To learn more about this important time in our history, go to www.isisrising.net. Do you ever wonder why certain things are happening in your life? How to start a business or a new direction? Need answers? Astrologer Bonnie Perbula can help you reveal your true self and gain strength and focus so you can achieve greater joy and success. Working with a natal birth date, time, and location, Bonnie brings out qualities to aid you in getting the best from your life. She can help you unlock dormant traits to bring you greater awareness. Bonnie also conducts public speaking engagements to educate aspiring astrologers on their journey to the stars. A gifted artist bonnie bridges her talents and recently launched a line of astro bears uniquely created in colors of individuals astrology charts she also makes one-of-a-kind necklaces of crystal beads and woven thread to learn more about the world of bonnie Prabula, go to bonniegprabula.com and for astrology consulting visit astrologyconsultants.com or call or email her at 808-526-1536 or bonniegp at aol.com Welcome back to the Art Ambassador Radio Show on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Gwenda Joyce, and I'm here with artist Julie Cohn, who has been participating in a fascinating collaborative art exhibition that we've been talking about. And I wanted to let you know out there that Julie Cohn, the artist, is also known as Jules. Julie, tell us why the two names. Well, first of all, um, I've been Julie Cohn in the art world for so many years, and it's been very fitting to have a a first name and a last name. But in the music world, there are many singers who like to have just one name. And I have been nicknamed Jules without the E. Uh, Many Jules have the E in their name, just like my Cohn, C-O-H-N, doesn't have the E. For some reason, I like to knock the E off. Uh, But I decided to be Jules, and the reason is I love the feeling of the intimacy of having that one name. Because when I'm singing, uh, and I sing jazz and Latin rhythms and original tunes, uh, I really like to uh, have this intimate experience with the audience. Um, And I feel that the heartfelt the heartfelt feelings come through the voice. And so Jules is, is in a sense a little bit more of an intimate feeling um, than Julie Cohn. So the music that you do is, uh, uh, was described in a recent interview as the medium is improvisational the way jazz is. And you have also found an affinity with watercolors, which you talk about being improvisational. Uh, And you also talk about in terms of both, there's kind of a conversation going on. Uh, There's a sense that Mm -hmm. it's not all about you controlling everything. And I thought this was a fascinating (laughs) relationship. Uh, Tell us more about it. Well, first of all, I just want to say that one can be a lot more happy uh, uh, happier in life when one's open to improvising. You know, like if uh-huh. something doesn't go the way that I thought it would go and I don't get all upset about it and just go with the flow, I'm going to be happier. And a lot of jazz and watercolor, they both of them have this property where 
if something doesn't quite go the way one thinks, one can turn it into something else. So, for instance, when the watercolor's on the paper, I love to watch it move. I love to dance around with the watercolor and watch it move around the paper. And I really have no idea how it's going to end up, except for that I might know if it's darker or lighter. You know, I have, I have an idea somewhat, but I don't know exactly what it's going to look like. And in a way, that freedom is exciting. It's a, it's a conversation. It's, it's a relationship that I'm having with the medium. And the same thing can happen with music in the sense that when I am doing what's called vocal ease, meaning just playing with sounds uh, as they come to me and, and not lyrics that are understandable, you know, like in, in the English or other languages, uh, then that vocal ease is an improvisation. I do understand the structure of the chords underneath and, and how the music is being played instrumentally so I can sing along with it. But I don't always know which note's going to come out first. Well, it's fascinating how music affects your art and art affects your music. And that, I imagine, is your solo work, but you're also uh, performing with a band or uh, a partner. So tell us about that. Well, actually, it's interesting you say um, that that was my solo work, but, but you know, the, the vocalese is for both my solo work because I play guitar and sing and, and, and uh, do performances solo, and sometimes I use the improvisation there. I also uh, am with a band, uh, and Dave and I uh, have been playing together for quite a while, about six years. Uh, we've been, uh, he's a, a piano player, and he's an arranger, a composer, uh, producer of music. He's, he's really, he, he's worn many, many hats and he's, he's helped me tremendously with my music. Uh, and he's an incredibly sensitive player. Really, we, we have a really good fit uh, with the music and we have a wonderful band as well. Uh, Achitan on drums. And at this point we have Richard Saunders on bass and we've had a variety of different bass players with us, uh, all wonderful players. Well, Julie, that's fantastic to hear about you. You really are a collaborator and a, a spontaneous <laughs> improviser all in one. You can find out more about Julie's music at julesanddavemusic.com. And Julie has something special that she would like to offer to you listeners today. So, Julie, uh, please go ahead and tell us what that might be. Sure, I have... It's a choice of either one premier seat or two general seating for a concert that I am putting on with my band this Friday, just in two days, in Redwood City at a wonderful dining place called Angelica's. Uh, We are on the main stage, and it is a dinner show. And I am very open to having people call me at 510-672-672. 2858. I'll repeat it one more time. 510-672-2858. And share that they want to be part of uh, this drawing that I'm going to be doing tomorrow at 4 o'clock. And I'll be letting people know who will be getting either the two general tickets or the one premier ticket for the show. Well, Julie, that's so generous of you. Uh, Thank you so much for that offer. Uh, You can also contact Julie at contact at julieconearts.com, and that's spelled J-U-L-I-E-C-O-H-N arts.com. Uh, contact at julieconearts.com. Julie, it's just been wonderful to have you here on the Art Ambassador Radio Show today. Uh, we are coming to you live Thank from the you. BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Gwenda Joyce. Stay with us. We'll be back. Essential Nutrients, LLC, is the brainchild of entrepreneur Barbara Burns. Inspired by a desire to help others, Barbara worked with a team of scientists to develop unique nutritional liquid supplements with the goal to improve the quality of your life. Glucosamine, zinc, and calcium are essential to well-being, and this is the focus of Essential Nutrients, LLC. 
Whether you're a professional athlete, weekend warrior, student, business owner, or homemaker, Essential Nutrients offers products for everyone, including the family pet. And they're easy to take, no pills. Health requires commitment, exercise, a good diet, proper supplementation, and action. So take action today and get your supply of essential liquid nutrients by visiting www.essential-liquids.com. Don't put off your health any longer. Take essential products today and start to measure the difference. Unleash the obstacles that bind you with certified professional coach Joanne Charette, a master practitioner in energy leadership. Joanne can help you break through personal and professional barriers and guide you to a higher level of empowerment and fulfillment. Passionate and dedicated, Joanne engages with her clients on a mutual journey. Her dynamic energy will motivate you to move forward as you partner on a venture to greater results. Isn't it time to make a breakthrough and commit to live the life you deserve? Invest in yourself and let Joanne Charette be the catalyst to the realization of your dreams by making them a reality based in quebec canada joanne is also a space coach using social media and skype to work with anyone anywhere around the world contact joanne charette today at 819-360-3266 or email her at actionrealization at live.ca 819-360-3266 now is your time Welcome back to the Art Ambassador Radio Show. I'm your host, Gwenda Joyce. We're on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. The hour that I spent at the Collaboration and Connection Exhibition at the Islamic Community Center of Northern California in Oakland, California, really set me up for a heartfelt uh, holiday season. And that's why I wanted to talk about it today on the Art Ambassador Radio Show. Being at the exhibit, enjoying the artwork, and thinking about the collaborations that connected it, that created it, focused me on peace. And I came away feeling like I had been affected by the importance of opening myself up to the magnificent and diverse wonders of the world. I know I'm a softy, but the holiday season is a time for that. And I want to carry that out into the world in a larger way. We can bring that kind of emotion out into the world and make it a better place. You can still see the show at the ICCNC or also go to interfaithart.org and find out more. I want to thank Leah Delson and Julie Cohn for being here today. It's, it seems like history to reflect on the fact that Julie Cohn took the YES program from me several years ago. I'm so great, gratified to hear how it helped her progress with her art career. And she has so many successes going on that have really branched out her connection with an audience to bring her creativity, both with her art and her music. Uh, the purpose of the YES program is to do exactly that. I know it makes a difference for people. I know it makes a difference for artists. And for the audience, too, for those of you who love to be in contact with creative and wonderful expressions, both artistically and visually, for artists to move from st struggling to confident after just 13 weeks in taking the course, um, to find that they are exhibited in exhibitions of all kinds, making sales and finding gallery representation. They're taking their art out in, into the world in so many wonderful and amazing ways. Uh, for those of you who are listening, who are artists, you too can make 2018 be a year of change where your art career branches out and makes new connections. I'll be starting a new session of the YES program this month. Uh, the first one will be on January 19th. Programs are held online, so you can be anywhere. You can be even in the comfort of your own studio and take the program. Saves travel time, saves um, all sorts of, of uh, blocks and obstacles to deal with. Thank goodness for the internet. And you can connect with other artists who are also in their studios. You can find new ways to branch out. Uh, 
go to the website, theartambassador.net website, and apply and find out more about the YES program. How does the YES program change you? Well, specifically, as Julie said, it helps you with your confidence. You are better prepared to enter the art world with your artwork. You become clearer about your priorities and what you want to show and sell. And if you're interested in gallery representation, it gives you greater understanding for that often mysterious process. A final way that's really important is that for Julie, it helped her remove her deeper fears that interfered with her going forward. And you can see what a difference that made for her. The biggest change, I think, that the YES program makes for artists is to give you a success mindset. It replaces that starving artist mentality and helps you show up as a positive, confident artist. You become that positive, confident artist, and it changes everything. If you're committed to your success, this is how to make it happen. It really moves forward when you enroll in the YES program. I invite you to take a look at it. Again, that's at the artambassador.net website, artambassador.net. Find the information about the YES program. And if you have any questions about the show or anything that you feel comes up for you regarding your art and your artistic expression, you can contact me at gwenda at artambassador.net. I will answer next time. Once again, join us at the artambassador.net to find out more about the YES program. I'd like to thank you for joining me here and all the best to you in 2018. This is Gwenda Joyce. I'm your host on the Art Ambassador radio show, coming to you live from BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We'll see you next week. This has been The Art Ambassador with your host, Gwenda Joyce. If you're stuck in a creative world with little to no meaningful exposure and are looking to blend creative with the entrepreneurial spirit, listen each week for enlightening options and answers on Gwenda Joyce's The Art Ambassador. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.